Hi guys, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Woman podcast. We're really glad you joined us. I'm here with my co-host, Jamie Hampton, and today we're going to be having a discussion about mindfulness. I'm really excited to dive into this topic. We're also going to be announcing a new prayer resource for you guys, which is a new uh, like mini episode podcast thingy. So stay tuned for that and let's open with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this time to come together and just shut out the distractions of the day and focus on you. We just pray that your word would go out today, that you would help us to just direct and guide our discussion and, and help us to glean truth from it, help us to draw closer to you and just come away feeling more equipped to go deeper in our prayer lives. And, and we just ask that you would give us the ability to look at mindfulness in a spiritual way, not just the way the world looks at it, but help us to, to take it apart and look at it in a way that glorifies you and, and draws us closer to you. Amen. Our verse of the day today is from Psalm 119, verses 54 and 55. Your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I lodge. In the night, Lord, I remember your name that I may keep your law. And our just for fun question is, what is something random that you find yourself daydreaming about a lot? Hmm. I wish I had more time to think about that. I'm, I need to, now, usually, usually when I come up with the just for fun questions, you're really you, fast. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, I know. Yeah, we're doing it the other way around, yeah. <laughs> it is. And so I'm thinking, okay, what do I daydream about? Uh, it depends. So, uh, Okay, so imagine I spend an hour of a typical day in your brain. Oh, what surprises you? And I'm like, wow, I had no idea that Jamie thought these things are, they don't have to be bad. <laughs> no, I wouldn't tell you the bad things. No. <laughs> but I'm in your brain, I'd see them. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so let me think, a day in the life. Um, I think I spend a lot of time, and this is, this is, might be weird, but I spend a lot of time like, thinking about what it would be like if I were super organized and a great mm -hmm. time manager and like, like what it would be like if I was able to just feel in control, if that makes sense. Right. And mm -hmm. a lot of that stems from, you know, I feel frazzled or out of control and I'll be like, what would it be like if I just was always on time getting the kids mm -hmm. out the door or knew mm -hmm. where the socks were every day and always had a match to give my kids or for them to find for themselves. I think things like that, I think that's, it, it's not very exciting, but it's, I think that's kind of what I, I sort of think about. Um, and does it turn like, is it a positive, like, this is what I would love for it to look like. And so this is what I'm going to work for. Or is it a more negative of like, Oh, I'm never going to be like this. If I were like this, life would be so much better. Like, are you beating yourself up or are you kind of using it for positive um, encouragement? It's funny. Cause before, like there were, there was a time when it was always negative. Like I was just, mm -hmm. it was like the inner voice beating me down and saying, right. it wasn't a daydream of like what this would be like. It mm -hmm. was, you are so X, Y, or Z, or right. you, know, you have failed at this and you can't do this. Now it really is. I really think it's positive. And that's kind of a new revelation because I, that's a recent thing. And so just thinking about that, I'm like, you know, I really do picture. It's more like, how can I do this better? And what would that look like? And so that's kind of exciting for me to realize that because cool. it's kind of a new development for me. And there are other things though, like, um, like for instance, recently, so we, we found out about an interview that we're going to be doing with someone who's kind of high profile and, and exciting to me to be able to talk to her. But, um, I find myself replaying what I'm going to say. And I do that with no matter who I'm interviewing for the podcast, I go through the interviews and I like kind of daydream about that in my mind. Like, how am I going to make this? Like, what, what do I want to ask this person? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I think about the podcast a lot. And, and yeah. I also think about the podcast in a positive way. Like, well, what would it look like if we reached these people or we could do this mm -hmm. thing or publish mm -hmm, this yeah. resource? So I think about the podcast a lot in a positive way too. That's fine. Well, you know, it's interesting talking about like how you used to have so many negative thoughts about organization and stuff. And I think that like people who are anxious, and I'm not saying this is you, but like one of the 
things that you need in order to be an anxious person you need to have a decent imagination because <laughs> you're always worrying about the you know like the what ifs and so i've heard right. like some really good encouragement if you deal with anxiety like you can harness that imagination and turn it into the positive what ifs <laughs> That is a really good point because when I think of my own times that I've spiraled into unhealthy anxiety, like mm -hmm. not just worry, it's when my imagination runs wild with right. what ifs. I project mm -hmm. out in great detail all of that, yeah. not just one bad outcome, but all of them. And they all just mm -hmm. fall down, crashing down around me. So that's a really, I like that. That's a very good encouraging point. Yeah. For my daydreams, it's probably, I'm probably like you in the podcast, but more with my books, you know, just daydreaming about different storylines, plot lines, that kind of thing. But that's probably not a surprise. I'm trying to think, I have songs running through my head quite a bit. So I think my daydreams often are just random song lyrics splitting through my mind all the time. Do you, did you ever watch the movie A Christmas Story? about Ralphie yeah. and uh -huh. like, uh -huh. so I it's just funny whenever I think about daydreaming I think because when I was a little kid oh, if I got yeah. if I if my parents were upset with me or I was mad at them I would do things like Ralphie I would think in my mind mm -hmm. what if what if I you know yeah. whatever you know, what if I, I left and never came back and left, left and never <laughs> came back and they yeah things like that but I, I I would daydream about stuff like that sometimes but yeah. That's funny. Yeah. You know what tripped me out? Like, I'm talking like I was four or five. You know what tripped me out was the song Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Because the part where it says life is but a dream. Yeah. I would seriously, as a four year old, like go through this like mini anxiety attack, being like, what if I'm just inside somebody else's dream? Feel <laughs> <laughs> like it really messed with me. <laughs> yes, that is that's impressive. Well, talking about your books, so Every once in a while when I, and it's not exactly daydreaming, but when something happens, I'll run it through my mind as if I was writing it in a novel. So you know that I have this sci-fi novel on the back yeah. end, like for yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And I always think I'll come back to it. And I still think I will. But I thought about you the other day because I had one of those things where I was like, and she da 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 da, -da and how I would describe <laughs> this sound uh -huh. or this situation. And I'm like, that sounds really good. I should write that down. And then I thought, I wonder if Alana. Like, this is how lives her brain her always life goes. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> like that would be hard to turn off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's fun. It's really it fun. fun. The world yeah. through that lens. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. The only time it gets a little bit frustrating is if I have so many different ideas that I feel a little bit scatterbrained, yeah. you know, it can be a little hard to focus, but mm -hmm. no, in general, it is super fun. But anyway, Neat. talking about daydreams, what's in your mind, all this, we're going to have a discussion on mindfulness, what it means for us as Christians, and let's dive in. So what do we, let's just start, I think we do this like in every other episode, let's start with a definition. <laughs> hey, I think that's important though, because it's, it you know, especially with something like mindfulness, because we've talked about affirmations on the podcast mm -hmm. before, which could be taken as a mm -hmm. secular or even a um, like new agey, new agey kind of thing. And we're not talking about that. And I think for mindfulness, right. it's the same thing. Like it's really important, I think, to take this concept but to view it through the lens of scripture and through God's eyes and like how it pertains to our lives as Christians. So yeah, what, what does that look like as a Christian, as opposed to like woo woo new age mindfulness? Right. Right. And so when I think about just the, um, you know, non mystic kind of mindfulness, I really just, I think about things like focusing on your breath, slowing down, learning how to calm your your thoughts when they get really fast. Those are the kinds of things that I think of with mindfulness. So maybe let's just give our quick caveat at the beginning that some people do kind of tie this in to more of like the Buddhist slash Eastern meditation kinds of thoughts. And, and we're just not there. And, you know, it's, it's fair enough. Let's just throw it out there. If you're not comfortable with this, it's not something that we're saying that you need to embrace. But I think that if you're comfortable with it, I think there are definitely things about mindfulness that can very much help our prayer lives. Does that sound like a good enough intro? It does. And you know, it reminds me of the scripture um, that talks about like, take, take every Taking thought captive, captive and make mm -hmm. it obedient to Christ. And you know, 
it it calls for pause. It cause it calls for reflection and slowing down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of mindfulness. That's one facet of it possibly is slowing down, being self aware. Um, mm -hmm. I also think of it as um, like gratitude when you talk about things that yeah. you're grateful for. Um, being mindful of the present moment and for sure where you are and what you're thankful for in that moment. And it, it transform. Yeah. So I don't know. Those are just some scriptural yeah. kind of things that came to my mind is absolutely. You know so, you know, the way that mindfulness in the secular world, let's just kind of talk about it as a secular entity. And then we can focus on how this can look in a Christian perspective, because not everybody puts the two together and some people still have, um, I don't want to call them superstitions, but maybe like they, they just don't feel like, okay, well, that's not a good idea. Cause yeah, some people from other faith practices will use words like mindfulness or meditation. And so some Christians are like, we don't even want to touch that. So what's, what I see is being neat. And I've even like, I don't know if it's because of what I've been looking at on my phone or whatever. I'm getting all these like newsfeed suggestions now that are about this kind of, um, what do they call it? E-meditation is I think one of the words that's been thrown about, you know, so you're, you're using kind of modern technology, you're putting modern spins on some of these practices. So like there are apps that will help you. Um, I have this really cool headband. Have I told you about my headband, Jamie? Oh, is this the we one? Just, yeah, it, we were on a, we were on the phone when it came to the house, but we, we hadn't tried it yet by the last yeah, time. Yeah. You did. Yeah. So yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. So basically it's this headband you put around your forehead and it will track things like your heart rate, how right. fast you're breathing. It can even track like your brain activity. So it's like, are your, is your brain super, super active or are you calming your thoughts down? Whoa. So, so it's not just heart rate, it's brain. Exactly. Activity. And it gives you kind of immediate. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you immediate feedback. And so it'll be like, um, a soundscape. So the one that I've been trying in um, one of my sons has been focusing on this too, to just kind of help get a little bit more focus and stuff and really to teach yourself to calm down because he, he can be kind of wound up. And so it has this like rainforest soundtrack in the background. And every time you get to a really calm state, birds will chirp. And then if your thoughts start to get really, really, really fast and chaotic, you'll hear like thunder and rain. So it gives you kind of immediate feedback. Wow. And what I find is that this is so helpful for getting in, you know, for, for quieting yourself in order to pray, you know, and to be able to just realize, yeah, it's okay to take 10 minutes out of my day to just sit in God's presence and rejoice in him. And if a thought pops into my head, then I, you know, turn that into a prayer. And then I go back to just sitting and enjoying being in God's presence. That's kind of what I see as the really amazing part of mindfulness as it can benefit our prayer lives is it's really just teaching your, your brain to slow down and taking cues from your body. So I think there was a long time where I just, I thought of my body as an afterthought because I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. my, my soul's eternal. Well, not eternal as in like it's been around, but my soul's going to live forever in heaven. My body's only going to be, you know, on this as it is, you know, like a century at the very most. Right. And so who cares about my body? <laughs> but the more I've seen, and we've talked about it a ton on the show, just the relationship between like, if I'm sick, I have a really hard time praying, or if I've forgotten my vitamins, I'm always in a bad mood. And that obviously is going to impact my prayers. Or if I'm not sleeping well, I can't focus. So I can't pray as well. The more I've been focusing on realizing, yes, my body is going to die, but right now I'm still living in my body. <laughs> and so even taking some body cues, like one of the mindfulness exercises that I, I really like as a way to kind of start my prayer time, it's just called scanning down where you just kind of think about your forehead all the way down to your toes and just kind of slowly think about each, you know, each part of your body and just noticing. That's, I think, also a big part of mindfulness, noticing what feels tight or tense, but also noticing like, wow, my stomach feels great. That's probably because I just had this nice warm cup of tea, you know? Like you were talking about with gratitude, how sometimes just slowing down to notice those things can be really, really nice. And I find that some of these practices really help me 
with my mental focus, which definitely helps with my prayers. Right. And I like the point that, so even if your mindfulness practices, whatever it is, so like I have, I have an, an Apple watch that has breathe the, yeah, the app. I've heard of that one. Yeah, I haven't done it, but I've heard it's, of it. It's a breathe app and it's just, it comes pre-programmed and every once mm-hmm. in a while it'll ding and I'll look. And at first it was annoying. And then I did it <laughs> a couple of times and I thought, yeah. whoa, and it made me appreciate air and it made me appreciate yeah. like the, the ability to breathe. And it made me just stop and slow down. So that in itself is not spiritual unless I directly gave God thanks for air, which, you know, is neither here nor there, but that practice of slowing down is training my body and my brain exactly to mm-hmm. slow down. So it does the mindfulness practice that you do doesn't have to be inherently spiritual to have mm-hmm. spiritual benefits. I think is- I absolutely agree. It's it's along the same lines of exercising or taking your vitamins or getting good sleep, like doing all right. these things that kind of make you feel better anyway, so that when you go to pray, you are more focused or, you know, taming your social media habits so that you're not as programmed to need distractions. You know, I feel like almost maybe more than anything else, we talk a lot on the show about Um, Well, we talk about being gentle with yourself, and then we also talk about just staying focused, Mm -hmm. and mindfulness is huge in helping you be focused, and it also, another thing I really appreciate is there is a huge emphasis on being gentle with yourself, and so the goal isn't to stop thinking. The goal isn't to, you know, force your heart rate to like 40 beats a minute or something like, the goal really is to just notice what's going on, you know, slow down long enough to notice, like that scanning down exercise. It's not... The purpose isn't to scan down and by the time you're done to have every single part of your body feel perfect. Right. You know, it's really just to notice what's going on because how often do we just hurry from one thing to the other to the other and we don't take the time to slow down like that. And um, it really, a lot of the mindfulness exercises that I've done, the the spirit behind it really is um, kind of the same spirit that we talk a lot. I'm not talking about spirit like Holy Spirit, capital S, but just the the sense of it or the philosophy behind it is what we talk about a ton, Jamie, is being gentle with yourself. And so, yeah, you know, your mind's not supposed to wander a whole ton while you're doing these exercises, but if it does, no big deal. You recognize that your thoughts have wandered and then you just go back to focusing on your breathing or you know to whatever like that uh, rainforest soundscape or you know the one thing that you kind of are focusing your attention on you just bring your thoughts back to that so I think that it also really helps me with that sense of self-compassion so that instead of beating myself up being like wow Alana your mind has wandered like 50% of the time that you're trying to do this okay, so (laughs) that means that 50% of this time I spent, (laughs) you know, focusing on what I was meant to focus on. So I I really appreciate that side of it too. I do too. And I I think looking at it as training, like we've talked about many times with prayer, it's training, training yourself to be focused, which involves like, you've got to start somewhere, even if it's Mm -hmm. your, you know, if you do the workout analogy, even if it's walking slowly on your treadmill mm-hmm. for 30 minutes and then the next day you for walk five minutes, for a minute, yeah. mm-hmm. jog for a minute, walk for a minute, you know, yeah. but we need to expect that we're not going to come at it perfectly and that mm-hmm. any progress is good progress. And even that constant wandering away and bringing it back and wandering away and bringing it back, it's like sit-ups, you know, it's making, mm-hmm. it's making progress. And getting us to the point where we can be more meditative, we can be more focused in our prayers when we do come to that time of, of setting aside time to pray. And I think mm-hmm. that's the exciting thing about it is that, you know, to know that our brain is, what do you call it? Neuroplasticity. It's, it's yeah, moldable. It's, plastic, yeah. It can regenerate and we can create new pathways mm-hmm. by doing exercises with our brain. And so, yeah, so I like that part about it too, is it does take away some of that discouragement of, I'm just not any good at praying. I'm, I'm definitely a distractible person. You can go from that to, if I practice being mindful and I practice prayer, I can become better at it and more focused and open Mm -hmm. to God's voice in the silence. 
Yeah, I think there is need for discernment. Like I've I've looked into some mindfulness exercises, like a lot of mindfulness, how they teach it. It's kind of like guided routines. And so kind of like your breath app, what I assume it's like, you know, take a deep breath, let it out. Like they're guiding you through how long to hold your breath, that kind of thing. Right. Right. It's like actually yeah. a visual that shows you when. Yeah. You can... Right. Or, um, you know, like the scanning down, just a, a, a verbal prompt. Okay. Start at your head, go down. So some of it really is just that. And some of it does like there are, I would say maybe like 30 to 50% of what I look into. I'm like, okay, this is taking it I'm not comfortable with the whole thing in this. Like, for example, there's one secular mindfulness podcast I listen to where half of them I think are great. Like there's one that I really like where it's just prompting you to focus on things that you're thankful for. And so, you know, like you're doing some of these deep breathing exercises and then she's guiding you saying, okay, now think about somebody who made you laugh lately and, you know, experience gratitude for that person, that kind of thing. I really like, but every once in a while, um, you know, you can tell it just, it's not coming at it from a Christian perspective, you know? And so I think there is a need to be careful. Like some of these will go, I'm trying to think of one of the examples of ones that I didn't like, you know, but sometimes they might, you know, pull in some mysticism stuff, you know, like talking about your inner light or, you know, things like that. Um, but the really cool thing now, especially with this, what did I call it? The E- e-meditation or whatever that name they gave it like so much of it has really become just very westernized and secularized by secularized I don't mean like anti-christian I just kind of mean like not spiritual at all like it truly is focusing on your breath focusing on you know what you're hearing your five senses like a lot of mindfulness really is designed like the way I came across it was actually as a business practice, you know, like they recommend these kinds of things. So picture, you know, like the 50 year old businessman in his stodgy suit, like these are things that would still be okay with him. <laughs> like you don't have to get to, you know, sort of the weird woo woo kinds of things that are out there, which you need to be careful for. But a lot of them are, are really just focusing on things like your breath or like that headband I've got, like calming down your thoughts. Well, so let's talk about some words or wording or topics. Like what would be a red flag for someone that is practicing mindfulness and, you know, comes across something? I mean, the thing that, that comes to my mind, I mean, like inner light, like you said, um, spirit guide, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's another yeah. one, like in meditation that would be kind of, um, yeah. Another one that I sometimes do is sometimes they'll give a suggestion for an affirmation mm -hmm. and every once in a while, I just kind of adapt it. Like there's one that I go through. It's just like a 10 minute. It's like just, um, you know, an audio routine and it's really like it's total body relaxation, but the affirmation is something like, um, I breathe in peace and I let go of stress or something like that. And mm -hmm. I just change it to something like, um, God gives me peace and mm -hmm. he carries my burden is I think how I just kind of like, to me, that's not too big of a stretch. It doesn't, you know, there's no kind of check in my spirit, like, Oh, should I be dabbling in this? So sometimes, right. you know, the affirmations can be, um, more self-centered or human centered, you know, like I am the master of my own destiny. Well, no, actually you're not. <laughs> right. And so sometimes those are ones that you could just avoid, or those are ones where, you know, if, if it's not too big of a stretch, you can just kind of switch and put your own, own bent on it. So, yeah, I mean, there are definitely places where mindfulness or meditation really can dabble into things that as a Christian, I wouldn't recommend anybody dabble into, but especially like if you're just curious about starting this, I think a couple good recommendations. So it's, it's just the breathe app is the one that you're using. Yes. Okay. And, and like all it does is show you how to breathe. I mean, it, you can get it on any, any, um, Apple device probably. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah, it just yeah. basically takes time out and it has a little flower that gets big when you breathe in and gets small when you breathe out and that's it. Yeah. There's no spiritual right, connection right. in any way. <laughs> Yeah. And so what I found is, you know, like I do like these mindfulness practices, but I also kind of get a little bit annoyed when like, let's say I want to find a mindfulness practice to help me give thanks at the end of the day. I get annoyed because I have to listen to like three or four before I find one that I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And so what I started to do was to record my own 
And then basically the only reason I decided to turn it into a podcast is because I was getting annoyed with having to look them up on my phone. I'm like, wouldn't this be easy if they were just like all right there? That is so, so funny. So that's how this came about. You just yeah, needed to catalog I made it, it for, me. for yourself. <laughs> I did. And so, and then I'm like, well, if I'm looking for something like this, I'm sure the other Christians are looking for something like this. So I would say, you know, if you're the kind of person who has never gone into this at all, or you're listening to Jamie and me talk about this, and you're still feeling kind of squeamish, what I wanted to do with these was to create something that you don't have to be so cautious. You can just kind of dive into. So what I call them are guided prayer routines, basically, and and they're like 10 to 12 minutes long. There's usually one focus. So it might be like today's focus is gratitude. And then I'm just going to do the things like, you know, think about somebody who encouraged you lately and give God thanks for them, you know, and then there are periods of silence while you're doing that. We do some of the mindfulness exercises like deep breathing or scanning down, but the emphasis really is just kind of verbal cues to help guide you as you pray. And there's some scripture incorporated into it. And so this is, I would say, a really good step for somebody who is interested in learning how to slow down, who likes the idea of mindfulness for the focus you get, but you don't want to have to worry about, you know, the the spiritual mess that can come if you're not looking at it from a Christian perspective. So those are available now. So basically, wherever you listen to Praying Christian Women, you should be able to find this new podcast, and it's called Mindful Christian Prayers. Yes. Um, oh, I'm so excited. And so it's searchable on iTunes, Stitcher, all those places. So that is, yeah, I'm so excited about this when I heard that you were doing that. But I didn't realize until just now that you had done it for yourself. <laughs> just for catalog. me. I know. That's just too awesome. But yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I, I have a, um, there's a really neat saying that I like just for my own creativity and it's called create the art that you wish existed. And this is such a perfect example of that, you know, like it's not artism, it's not like a painting, but like I wanted a resource like this. <laughs> and so I made it and I'm like, okay, you guys can enjoy it too. So yeah, that's mindful Christian prayers. And again, I'm trying to bring in some of the components of just slowing down, learning how to, you know, just take a deep breath and, and give God thanks for that breath. <laughs> and then, but to have it in the, in a setting where you don't have to, you know, like have a whole lot of, uh, what am I trying to say? Like where, where you're not going to get the spiritual heebie-jeebies from it. <laughs> yes. I love that because then you don't even need to give the disclaimer, okay, be vigilant, be discerning. You can just say, exactly. hey, go to this and do it. So will Here you be adding go. more? It, For we, sure, yeah. You'll be yeah. adding as we go? Yeah, I would definitely like to keep this up. I know that it helps me kind of find a reason to slow down. Like, do you remember forever ago when we were making our – uh, scripture journal and it was kind of like helping us get back in the word or I don't know if it was for you it was for me oh absolutely feel, yeah I feel the same way about this like this is giving me an actual reason to make this a priority I don't want to commit to like there's going to be a new episode every Monday or something but for sure I'm going to be adding to that or at least I plan to and really yeah I, I made it because it's something that I wanted for myself <laughs> <laughs> no well and that's the same thing when I did our gratitude from A to Z right, right. videos I thought you know I I'm I want I want to do this for myself I want to have this and so I, and going back and doing the edits it's been so much fun like going through it as a devotional myself and mm -hmm. you know every resource that we've done I feel that way about so that's for that's sure really cool yeah. Well, great. Oh, I can't wait for, I can't wait to use these myself. The Yeah. You'll have to let me know what you think. I'm, mindfulness, I'm kind of, yeah. I'm curious about that. So I will let um, you know. Yeah. So yeah, check out mindful Christian prayers and subscribe to that. So that when there is a new, I don't even want to call them episodes. Like what would you call them? Like a new routine or addition or a new meditation who knows in the in the show i'm like this is a guided prayer routine for christians so that's kind of what i call them so yeah. when there's a new guided prayer routine <laughs> we'll all I right like that. let's close with our blessing and benediction may the kindness and grace of your heavenly father lead you to repentance today may your heart be humbled before him to whom we all must give an account May your spirit be quick and willing to confess your transgressions to the Lord so that he might forgive the guilt of your sins. May God himself, the one who is faithful and just, forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And our benediction is from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.